Again, my name is Derek Kinder. I'm a hydrologic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this presentation, we're going to discuss flow frequency, but specifically volume frequency duration. We're going to discuss the difference between flow and average volume. We're going to demonstrate how to calculate average in-day flow volumes, and we're going to define critical inflow duration and discuss how to estimate it. So instantaneous peak flows that we've pretty much been talking about up to this point in the class typically drive maximum loading for levees and run of river projects with little or no upstream storage, like we see on the figure or the picture on the left. Flow volumes often drive the maximum loading for reservoirs impounded by dams with significant upstream storage, like we see on the right. We have a quote from Bulletin 17C here. I think this is important, but it's documented in our key guidance. So the annual maximum flood series is based on the instantaneous maximum flood peak for each year. Annual maximum mean daily discharge or annual maximum end day flood volumes may also be considered depending on the intended use of the flood frequency relationship. So oftentimes, for some projects, we're going to be looking at the annual maximum. Other times, we're going to be looking at the annual maximum end day volumes. Note that daily average inflow data is typically based on a calendar day and is not maximum 24-hour period information. Um, this, this can bias the published daily flow data up to the low side. So for shorter critical durations, this has the potential to bias the frequency curve. And for longer duration, the bias can get washed out and not be as impactful. Um, often, you cannot do anything about this because the best data you have is that 24-hour daily data. But if you have sub-daily flow data, you should calculate the maximums like you see in this example and get the true 24-hour maximum average or the true maximum three-day average. Not Don't limit yourself to basing it on a 24-hour midnight to midnight or noon to noon time period. Um, flow rates are averaged over the desired duration and are reported as a flow rate. Um, this volume represents the volume under the hydrograph over that duration. For this example, the maximum three days of flows were average, which results in approximately 73.7 thousand CFS. If we look at the area under the curve approximated in these five hour intervals in the, as the blue bars, we calculate approximately the same result. So again, we're just averaging. It's the same as the area under our hydrograph curve. So annual maximum inflow volumes can be calculated from continuous inflow records for various end day durations. Um, we create an annual maximum series for each end day duration that we're concerned with. Um, plotting positions and analytical flow frequency can be computed for each duration, just like we've been computing for annual instantaneous peaks. So using our annual maximum series, Empirical plotting positions are calculated and analytical distributions are estimated. The same process is used for annual maximum instantaneous peak flows, maximum one day flow volumes, annual maximum seven day flow volumes, et cetera. On this um, slide, we're showing the series of volume frequency duration curves to illustrate the process to calculate the plotting positions and analytical distri distribution. Um, however, in most cases, we don't create all of these. We're usually more concerned with what we consider to be our critical inflow duration and maybe two or three other durations to test and do a sensitivity analysis with. So for critical inflow duration, if we have a volume driven project, we need to determine which end day duration should we be selecting. The critical inflow duration is defined as the inflow duration that results in the highest water surface elevations for the reservoir of interest. Often we are interested in extreme floods that have relatively short critical duration. Not always, but often. When evaluating events, the critical inflow for the event is often assumed to be the time the reservoir inflow exceeds reservoir releases or outflow. So if we have inflow exceeding outflow, what's going to happen in a reservoir? Our state is going to increase, right? So that's a good place to start. What duration are we typically seeing our reservoir rise? Um, another assumption is the time the majority of the inflow hydrograph occurs. And I've, seen, I've heard a rule of thumb applied maybe approximately 80%, the, like the, the middle 80% of the volume of our event. And remember that we want to pick single events because the extreme events tend to be based on one single event. Um, later presentations, we'll discuss stage frequency, and we'll also discuss how to ensure collect, correct selection of critical inflow duration to develop the stage frequency. Um, time to the peak stage and hydrograph shape should be considerations in selecting a critical duration. So given the subjectivity of this decision, sensitivities for multiple critical inflow durations should be typically evaluated. 
All right, we got to check on learning here. So for a given inflow event, which will typically be larger, the maximum one day average inflow volume or the maximum three day average inflow volume? I heard one day, that's correct. So typically the maximum one day average volume will be larger as is average over a shorter time frame at the highest part of the inflow hydrograph. Whereas the three day is averaged over a longer time frame, which takes into account lower flows into that average. Good job. So in summary, flow volumes control for reservoirs with significant upstream storage, while peak flows control for levees and run of river dams. Um, annual maximum flow volumes are represented by flows averaged over a time period, usually one or multiple days. And the critical inflow dur duration drives the highest reservoir elevations. And this can vary by flood mechanisms and season. And one will generate the highest pools that are AEPs of interest. We discussed the difference between peak flows and average flow volumes. We demonstrated how to calculate average in-day flow volumes, and we defined critical inflow duration and how to estimate it.